Hi there, my name is Hannah Viano. Uh, I'm an artist, illustrator, um, and a teaching artist with Meta Arts today. Um, I wanted to share with you my book, S is for Salmon, um, which I wrote and also illustrated, which means that I got to do the pictures for the book as well as the words. Um, I'm really excited to share it with you, and um, I know it's a little different today because you're seeing me on a screen and we can't be together in person, um, but I hope that we do get to do that together someday later on. And for now, please enjoy the video and feel free to um, bring in your family or anyone else who wants to watch. Um, and just go ahead and join in. You know, you can raise your hand and do the motions with me and um, kind of play along just as if I was there with you. And we will have fun. So the first thing I need to ask is a question. How many people, and you can raise your hand right at home, uh, how many people like to have a story read to them or look at a picture book together? Yeah, everybody, right? Uh, even more important, how many of you, when you're reading a story or looking at a picture book, get a little bit wiggly sometimes? Yeah, me too. This is the perfect book story presentation for you because I'm gonna introduce you to a bunch of alphabet letters, which you will probably know, and a bunch of animals and plants and characters. And for every animal and plant and character, uh, there's emotion. And so I need you to help me kind of tell the story or present the alphabet characters. Um, so just follow along and hopefully we can get those wiggles out as we go through the alphabet. The first one is anemone. A is for anemone. Now anemones are this creature that live just at the edge of the water, just a little underwater, just a little out of the water, and they reach out their little feelers, woo, and then if they get a little nervous, a little shy, they pull them back in. Can you guys warm up with that with me like that? Just reach out a little bit, and then pull back in. Okay, oh good, that was a good warm up. Our next letter is B for blackberry. So I have another question. When you eat blackberries or any berry, do you do it like this? Nice and tidy, nice and calm? Or do you eat them like this? As fast as you can, berry juice all over the place. Okay, show me which way you do it with your hands. Yeah, I do it like that, nice. So C is for crab. We have these Dungeness crabs, and when I think of a crab, I think of their big pincher claws and how those claws kind of sweep along. So maybe you can help me and just like sweep your pinchers like, like that crab walking down the beach. Nice, ooh, good pinchers. And so maybe we were on the beach and the crab kind of surprised us and we backed up and suddenly we're standing up tall next to a nice Douglas fir tree because D is for Douglas fir. And the Douglas fir grows a lot of different ways in its branches, but all of them stand really straight and tall. And I bet you can do a really good impression. So stand really straight and tall, like you're just like pulling up with a string, and then you will be a nice tall Douglas fir tree. And let's see, let's look up to the top of that tree because I think I see up in the branches kind of a tangly, branchy nest. And what might live in a big, tangly, branchy nest? I think I know. Maybe an eagle, maybe a bald eagle like we have. And so if I'm a bald eagle, I think the motion I need is I need to stretch my wings really wide, like I'm soaring around and maybe just flap around a little bit. Oh yeah, it feels good, it feels good. Okay, we're gonna land and we're gonna maybe come back down to the base of that Douglas fir tree. And maybe around us at our feet, we might see one of these. F is for fern. And now a fern starts really curled up in the springtime. And let's see, let's practice. Let's see, we would curl really tight. And then once that sun starts to come out a bit more, it's gonna uncurl. Oh, and feel that new spring sunshine. So you can curl up really tight like the spring and then open up oh to get all that nice sunshine very good 
Oh, I feel the sun. So I have my ferns at my feet, and my Douglas fir tree, and I think I hear a seagull, a gull. G is for gull. And there is a cool thing about gulls. Maybe you're in the forest, uh, kind of near the salt water, near the water, and you might see uh, like a clam shell or a purple mussel shell and say, whoa, what is this doing in the forest? Shells don't hang out in the forest. There is a trick. These gulls do this really cool thing. So imagine if you're a gull and you want to eat that clam and you're just pecking into that clam shell with your beak and it is not working and it hurts. So imagine you're at home and you have a peanut butter jar and you're just bonking your nose into it trying to get to that peanut butter. Not any fun. So the gulls are really smart and they take that clam and they fly up. So you can take your clam and fly up high and they look around, ooh, is there a nice hard rock? And they say, oh yeah. And they drop it and it falls smash. And that clam is now broken open and that gull can just go in, pick his nice lunch out, no problem, no pain in your beak. That is a fun thing about gulls. So while I was down there with the clam eating my lunch, I noticed some other cool plants. The horsetail is a very ancient, 100 million years old. And all that time, it has been making the best pretend swords because they have all these segments and you can just pull one off and then you can swashbuckle. That's a crazy word, huh? Swashbuckling is like what pirates do when they're having a duel, they're swashbuckling. So you can take your sword and you can swashbuckle a little bit. And if you're a pirate and if you have a sword and you've been swashbuckling, you probably also have in your belt a spyglass or a telescope, or a, yeah, let's call it a spyglass. So let's pull out our spyglass, and you can just make it with your hand, just like that, easy, and put it up to your eye, and look out, because I see something out there on the water, way out. Oh, I think I see our eye for island. And an island is actually the top of a mountain that's underwater, and we're just seeing the tippy top. Pretty cool, huh? So take one more look with your spyglass. I think we might need to go to that island. What do you think? Should we get in a boat? I have a rowboat right here. So you can take your hands on the oars and you can get in your boat and you can do some rowing. I'm gonna need help because it's a little bit of a ways out to the island. So row out to the island a little bit. And along the way, we can look over the side and we can see another couple of our friends. J is for jellyfish. Now a jellyfish just kind of goes with the water. And so I think of it as doing kind of this movement, just real gentle. They just kind of whoosh around under the water, really graceful. And then if we look on the other side of our boat, we see something else. We're gonna see our kelp. And the kelp, if the jellyfish goes like this, the kelp goes a little more like this. So you can kind of sway a little bit because the kelp is driven by the currents under the water and the waves and kind of moves with that underwater force. This is kind of tearing me out. I think we better row back to shore. Let's row back. And maybe walk up the beach. I see a nice big flat rock. Let's just lay on that flat rock and have a little rest. Whew. Busy day. And if I'm looking at that rock, I might notice something really small, just out of the corner of my eye, and maybe I'll have to investigate it. Because on a rock like that, there might be something called lichen. And lichen is just this little tiny plant, and they grow in sometimes really bright colors like pinks or bright greens. And so you have to sort of look close to see all the cool little details and features of them. And if we're looking close, and we're down there anyway, looking around and investigating, maybe we should look in the, the kind of dead leaves and the, the leaf litter, and we can kind of paw through it a little bit. So why don't you paw through that leaf litter like a little squirrel? Because maybe if we're really lucky and we're just in the right spot, we might be lucky enough to find our M, M for morel, morel mushrooms. And maybe if we have our mom and dad and they know their mushrooms, maybe we'll be able to take some home for dinner. Oh, yikes, watch out for this one. 
If you're pawing around in the leaf litter, you need to be aware of N. N is for nettle, stinging nettle. And if you touch the leaves of the stinging nettle, you get this tingly, prickly, stingy sort of sensation. It goes away, no huge deal, but no fun either. So watch out for the stinging nettle. One time I sniffed it thinking it was a different plant. Oh my gosh, tingles in my nose, crazy. Now I really need that rest. The nettles have worn me out entirely. So I'm gonna lay on my rock. Oh, and I might doze off and have a little dream. And I think I'm gonna dream of our next creature because I'm there lying, sleeping peacefully, and I'm thinking about an animal that just like reaches out its tentacles and like wraps around things, just like really curls and wraps. I bet you know who I mean. The octopus, such a cool creature. The octopus with all of its tentacles and its suckers that can really bend and twist and curl into all different shapes and little spaces. Pretty good dream. And I was enjoying it until, bop! You gotta bop yourself on the head. Bop! Because I had a bop. And the bop was from a pine cone that fell right out of the sky, probably from a tree, right onto my head. Bop! I'm a little bit suspicious that a squirrel might have dropped it. But anyway, it was a pine cone, bopped me on the head. It's crazy what happens out there. You know, I think the next one, it might not be an action we need. It might be, it might be a sound that I need your help with because I hear a sound and I think we need to make it a little louder. I think that I hear a bzzz. Can you help me by making like a bzzz, bzzz kind of sound? Oh yeah, yeah, even louder. Because if you get a whole hive, it's pretty loud. Bzzz, bzzz. And I'm thinking of the queen bee at the very center of that buzzing hive. And if we have bees, what are bees' favorite things? Flowers. And so that works really well because our next letter, it's a huge one. Rhododendron. I had to spell, I had to check the spelling like four times to make sure. Rhododendron. It's so big, this word. And a rhododendron is this plant that it kind of has long sort of wide open branches and then these really bright flowers so maybe reach out your branches and then make some flower petals at the end and then open them up just open your flower petals because sometimes the rhododendron is like bright pink or purple and in the spring it opens its flowers really wide and that rhododendron i bet from where it's sitting with its roots in the ground I bet it hears another sound. This little splashing sound. Maybe we need to just jump because the salmon jumps from stream pocket to little pocket of water up the stream as it makes its way to where it was first born. And so let's maybe jump, whoop, <laughs> whoop, as we go upstream, the upstream salmon run. Oh gosh. And right next to a little stream like that, we would maybe find this really cool flower. It's called a trillium. And the trillium is special because it has three leaves and three petals, always. And so it's easy to distinguish. So let's just maybe pretend that we were one of these flowers. Let's see, can you maybe make three leaves, like take a foot off the ground and maybe have three leaves, or maybe, maybe we're three, three petals all at once. <laughs> Very good. That's a tricky one. But if you're hopping around on one foot and you're near the seashore and you hop all the way to the beach, you got to watch out because we have another kind of treacherous one. U is for urchin. And the urchin, I love that word, urchin, is like a spiny little water creature that has these long spines and, as you can imagine, is not very nice to step on. It is an amazing creature, not nice for bare feet. So beware of the spiny sea urchin. <gasps> okay, for this one, we're gonna have to be really quiet. 
because this one is sleeping. This is the volcano. And the volcanoes around us are all sleeping right now. So let's be very quiet as we walk through this part of the alphabet. Shh. Thank you. Ooh, and since we were being so quiet, I think it helped us a little because I heard another sound. So let's say we were at the beach, right? We're at the beach and we're being quiet and we hear in the distance a sound kind of like this. What is that sound? And we say, I don't know that sound. And then you smell a smell and it's a really fishy, stinky smell. And you say, hmm, who makes a and smells stinky like fish breath? Whales. You might be around a whale because sometimes out on the water, you can smell them before you can see them or hear them before you can see them. So try it with me. Make, you can use your spyglass. It works good for this too. Make your spyglass again and you're gonna put it over your mouth and make kind of a t sound, like a t sound. So, kind of like them breathing out of their blowhole. But since we're so good at being quiet and listening, it's kind of perfect for this next one. I did something a little sneaky here, right? But that's what you get to do when you're an artist illustrator. X is for fox. Sneaky. But I really like this fox. We have a fox here called the Cascade Fox who is really cool. And when I think of a fox, they're so quiet and kind of just sneak through without making too much fuss. And so I think for fox, if we could just kind of, just kind of tiptoe around a little bit, because they just tiptoe and maybe you don't even see the fox, but you just see his little paw prints in the sand or in the dirt. So we'll just tiptoe around that one. And you know, all these things we've seen, I think, that we need to get a better vantage point for the end of our alphabet. So we have a thing here called the yellow cedar. And the yellow cedar is a great uh, branchy tree and they make really good climbing trees. And this one we have here is really good. So let's climb up in this yellow cedar. It's got nice big branches. Let's climb, 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 careful, we'll hold on tight. We'll climb up until we get a nice view of the whole area. All right, and we're going to see, we can probably see the volcano in the distance and the ferns and the crabs and all the things down below at the water's edge. And maybe while we're up there, we start to see and feel on our face uh, something called a zephyr. That's well, kind of a new interesting word, I bet. Um, I like that word a lot. And a zephyr is like a gentle breeze. And I really liked it for the end of the alphabet because that gentle breeze would just blow through really gently and it would rustle the ferns and maybe swoosh the hair on the fox tail and the fur and just kind of touch on all those different things that we've seen throughout the alphabet, all those animals and plants that we've gotten to know. So I thought that made a pretty nice ending to the alphabet. Thank you so much for joining me and playing our way through the alphabet. It has been really fun. I hope you had fun too. Um, and just, you know, when you're out in the world, you can notice new things like other plants and animals that maybe live in your backyard or that you see when you're walking around town. Um, and you can be thinking what other motions might go with those animals or, you know, just what are the things they do? Um, it's a great way to observe and kind of turn those observations into, into things that you can do and carry with you. Um, so thanks so much for joining me and have a great day.